connect with consumers. Got it. Uh, to connect with consumers. And that's because, well, you know, the because of COVID and because of the pandemic, there were huge kind of store closures and brands had to suddenly really think about their digital strategy. And many were not prepared for that sudden stay at home order where everybody was looking to their mobile phone to interact with a brand, to shop online, to you know just experience the brand in that way. And with retail store closures, it really meant that brands had to really think about their digital solution and also how to adopt some of these virtual solutions and they needed to do it super fast. That's why we saw that surgence of you know, brands really wanting to lean into the possibilities of AR. The reason why AR kind of is beginning to come out of that limelight and take the glory from VR is because more people have access to a smartphone than they do to a VR headset. It's a no brainer. Accessibility is a huge kind of win-win factor in, in augmented reality success, and it will continue to be. What's also super interesting when you begin to look at some of the data is 71% of consumers say that they would shop more often if they use um, AR, which is phenomenal, right? Because it's a very effective tool in either connecting with your audience, engaging with them in a different way, and also um, the ability for it to lead to sales. But yet it blows my mind. It's absolutely staggering that knowing this, that, you know, our audiences, you know, really engage with augmented reality content, but yet only 1% of retailers were using AR. So you can see why there was a huge appetite to use it and a huge appetite because of the pandemic to really shift their digital and augmented reality strategy. So when we think about the AR, it's really taking the market sh market share. It's it's really interesting to understand some of that data right now. The global AI, AR market is projected to grow from six billion this year to an eye-watering ninety-seven billion by twenty twenty-eight. That just shows you the projection. That just shows that there is a, the not only the appetite, but people are engaging and they're using it, and it's becoming part of their everyday kind of mobile behavior. And part of the, you know, the cultural norm to use um, augmented reality, not only in your, you know, day to day life, not only while you're shopping, but also in storytelling and in entertainment. So let's dig a little bit deeper into what AR actually is. What is the, all this malarkey and why is everybody getting super excited about it? And why am I excited about it? So I wanted to share some of the kind of fundamentals of AR, especially, you know, most people's kind of knowledge of AR. It's going to stem from some of the things that they've heard, possibly the AR filters that they've been doing on social platforms, but there is a whole world of augmented reality and possibility beyond that. And I wanted to share some of that with this with this group today. So there are you know there are multiple types of realities. The two the one we're going to focus on today is AR. Um, but I did want to take a moment to just kind of re, you know just clearly define the differences between augmented reality and virtual reality. In the very early days of doing a lot of these workshops, it was a question that I was asked the most. And to me, it was almost like, what? It's a no brainer. But augmented reality is just that. It is augmenting your real world with computer generated graphics. So you exist in the real world, a computer generated graphics in the form of an overlay, a video, an animation is overlaid into that real world that you can experience. Virtual reality, on the other hand, is also the use of computer generated graphics, but your real world is completely eliminated. You are transported into a completely different virtual world, 360 degrees, again, computer generated graphics. Um, and instead of seeing you know, your real world in front of you, you are transported to a different world. So you have AR and you have VR. We're gonna focus on AR. And when it comes to AR, the hardware, there's a multitude of different hardware that you can access to be able to experience AR. The most popular and the one that you, you use every day is your smartphone. Um, and that's iPhone or Android. But there's also, not to forget, you can experience AR through your tablet devices as well, the iPad or your Android devices too. But there are two other, you know, there are, uh, you know, a couple of other tiers of how you can experience AR. 
The second tier is obviously the headsets. So AR kind of glasses, Magic Leap being a very popular one that, you know, grabbed a lot of headlines over the past few years with the sheer amount of investment. And then Snapchat Spectacles, and they've just launched their kind of third, third iteration of their Snapchat Spectacles. And then HoloLens that you may have heard of as well. They are much more expensive and not as accessible, obviously, as your mobile phone. I don't expect the majority of consumers to have any of the, these devices in their home. And they're often used at events or they're often used at you know, experiential events or even kind of brands using them for training or education, but they're not kind of your day to day. And that's simply because of the price point. The price point is not something that an everyday consumer is going to use. And then right at that bottom level are some of the enterprise level headsets. So these are like super cool, very advanced, the most popular one that you've probably heard of, um, Google Glass Enterprise. You've got Toshiba there as well. And then you've got the Vivex M400. Those are very expensive. You're talking over $3,000 for one of those. And they're used at an enterprise level, you know, used for kind of more you know, a company training, workshops, you're not going to have these in, in consumers and brands are not going to go anywhere near these to create uh, consumer facing experiences either. But there's a kind of just a breadth of the type of hardware. But loosely, you can base group augmented reality hardware into two categories, right? I kind of say that it's the mobile tablet based or the headset based. Once you kind of understand like the different hardware that you can use to kind of experience AR, what are the types of AR? Well, there's also different types of AR. Um, and not all AR experiences are created equally. There's app-based AR experience. And an app-based AR experience is basically a native app that you would download on your iPhone or your Android device. Um, and it can be installed via the App Store or the Google Store or the Android Store. And um, it lives on the device and it has the functionality, it can tap into the functionality of your smartphone. So the, the fancier your smartphone, the more functionality that that app can tap into. You also have social-based AR. Now, I traditionally used to package those kind of two together. I used to say, uh, you know, app-based, social-based is all mobile-based AR. But I've separated it because in the past year alone, the sheer quality of content and the functionality av available on social-based AR has really, really skyrocketed. Social-based AR is probably the one that you're most familiar with. This is all of the Snapchat filters, the Instagram filters, the changing your face into a Disney character, the you know vomiting rainbow emojis. It's all of that fun that people are having in the social space. Um, a lot of the uh, platforms, um, social-based AR, is accessible from a lot of the platforms that you, you would have by downloading the Facebook app, Instagram app, or the Snapchat app. But there's also web-based AR. And this is one of my favorite kind of web-based AR examples. This is the Spider-Man um, uh, web-based AR experience that was, was done for the Spider-Verse uh, movie as part of a kind of marketing campaign. And web apps are basically uh, assessed, accessed via the internet browser. So that means it can adapt to any device. So you can do it via an iPhone, Android, or your tablet. And um, you don't have to download an app and you don't have to install it to experience it. But there are pros and cons of all of these. So whether you are experiencing something that is an app-based AR experience, social-based AR experience, or web-based AR experience, they all have different levels of functionality and different levels of quality and fidelity. And we're gonna talk a little bit about those as well. So what are the types of AR triggers? So you may have heard this and you know, anyone who's kind of been digging a little bit deeper about what AR is, what types of AR, experiences can you make there are different types of AR triggers once you've kind of figured out that you're going to experience AR on your smartphone and once you kind of you know and there's a multitude of app-based social-based web-based AR there's also marker-based AR marker-based AR is probably something that majority of people are familiar with so that means that you will um, the AR works by scanning a marker the example I have here is the bottle of wine. You scan the bottle of wine and then um, an augmented experience is delivered to you. That's called marker-based AR and it can be anything. I mean, I could scan my glass of water. I could scan objects. It triggers a um, experience. There's also markerless AR. 
And some of you may be familiar with this, one of the most popular ones, and you may have seen this out in the world, is the IKEA Place app. This is a great example of markerless base AR. I don't need a, a object to trigger the experience. With marker, markerless AR, it basically scans my, it will scan your environment and it places a, a virtual object into uh, a flat surface. So you have a lot of markerless based AR examples out there. And then the third type of trigger is also location based. And as you can derive from the name, the clues in that, it is basically digital elements placed in the environment based on your location. One of the most popular examples is Pokemon Go. Depending on where you are, when you open the app experience, a Pokemon is either in your vicinity and lucky you if you get Pikachu or not. And that is, again, based on your location, based off your smartphone data and functionality, it's able to, to understand where you are and then serve you with digital uh, virtual experience based off that. So super interesting when you look at the not only the different types of hardware, not only the different types of AR, but then also the different ways in which you can trigger that AR experience too. Now, I actually run a workshop, which is a much more kind of deeper dive workshop into the pros and cons of the different types of app-based, web-based, and social-based AR. I'm not going to get into that too, with, in too, into too much detail today, otherwise we'd need another two hours to kind of go through it. But when, we are, when you are kind of looking to understand augmented reality, one of the most important things is, um, and especially working with brands and clients, is understanding the different elements within AR and the different types of experiences that you can create so that you can have this conversation with your clients about the pros and cons of what type of experience you are creating. Unfortunately, it's not, you know, as simple as building a website and everybody can experience it. There are pros and cons for each. And I wanted to give you a little bit of example of what some of those pros and cons are so that you can go away armed with a little bit of information about the differences of the three. When it comes to app-based AR, and as I said, Pokemon Go, I think about Pokemon Go is a, great, is a great example to have at the back of your mind. Some of the pros and cons to this, well, I mean, what's amazing is there were more, so Pokemon Go is an app, you would have to download it. There were more than 250 million daily app downloads between 2019 and, and 2020, which is staggering, right? That means people love downloading, downloading a good app and they continue to do so. So that's great the experience and the quality of the AR is really, really enhanced. To me, it's a gold standard of AR. Any app-based AR, the quality is fantastic. And that's simply because it's using the power the tech, uh, the, and the technological features from your phone. Now, there's also, as I said, there's greater functionality and it's much faster than web apps. It's running off your phone, which means it's so much faster. But there are some con cons. It's expensive to make. And making apps, anyone who knows, making kind of apps is expensive. You do also need to maintain and update those. So if you're thinking about creating an experience and you're thinking about which platform you're going to be launching your AR experience on, these are some considerations you need to factor in. And also there's the compatibility issue. Often when we kind of make AR experiences on uh, via an app, we have to make a choice of whether it's iOS or it's Android. And sometimes you're lucky enough to have a client that has a budget to be able to do to do both because it means usually designing and building the app from scratch for both platforms. So real, really some considerations there to think about. So that's app based AR. And then if we think about web based AR, so web based AR and the example I gave earlier was a Spider Man. This is one of my one of my newest and favorite favorite examples. This is actually yes, Snoop Dogg um, captured with volumetric capture. Um, for an AR experience, it's a great example of a web-based AR. So web-based AR, as I mentioned, you, it's, you can um, access the content via internet browser. So you type in a URL, you scan a QR code, go to a URL via your phone, by your tablet, and the augmented reality experience is served to you. What's, in, what's great about that is you have 3.5 billion smartphone users. Everyone has one of these, so it's very accessible. It, you don't need an app to download. So that means that, you know, it's very difficult to get consumers to download your app. 
It really is. And actually creating an app-based experience could be a barrier to entry. It has to be something really, really tangible and something that they want. So web-based AR becomes highly desirable. It's fiction-free. There's no app. There's no installation. You can do real-time updates. It's literally like having a, your, your, your experience is on a website. And it can be updated in real time without the need to submit to the app and create and do an install. But there are cons. It doesn't work offline. You don't have internet, don't have the app experience. And there is limitations in the experience and quality. So remember, an app-based AR experience is running off your phone. So it uses that functionality and quality is high-end. Web-based experiences are running off the internet. So they're, they're, the functionality is much lim much more limited and the fidelity is not as high quality as that base. Um, and it's also slower than mobile apps. And that's literally because it's running off the internet. If your internet is slow, the experience is not going to be great either. So again, pros and cons. Easy to access, scalable, quick to update. It can be launched quickly. I forgot that one. That's great. I mean, you don't have to apply to the app store and wait for it to be approved. I could build something tonight and have it ready for tomorrow. But again, there are some cons too. And then finally, social-based app. They, these have become very popular. And you can understand why they're popular, right? So creating an app for your AR experience can be challenging because how are you going to get people to download it? You need a marketing strategy just to do that. But the most popular apps out there are the Snapchats, are the Instagram, are the Facebooks. Most of us have them on our phone. Most of them are using, most of us are using them daily, two to three hours, if not more. And so using the social based platforms to create your AR experience has become highly popular and highly appealing for a lot of brands. This is a great example from Gucci, where they partnered with Snapchat recently and they and, you know, Snapchat are going all in on social commerce here. So you can use the Gucci Snapchat lens to um, virtually try on a pair of fancy Gucci shoes and then buy directly from your Snap platform so really streamlining the experience so what are some of the pros and cons here well it's faster than web app that's for sure it can be launched super quickly because you're using leveraging whether it's the social platform so you're le leveraging the power of facebook of snapchat of instagram and tiktok let's not forget tiktok they also have a a, a multitude of ar features being released and launched every day and then also what I think is really compelling with social based AR is the commerce functionality. So not only can I create an experience that someone will want to engage with, I can that I can also add the, the, the buy functionality right there. So I as a consumer can be in Instagram or Snapchat chatting with my friends, see an experience from a brand, no need to leave that platform and go to that brand's website, but I can purchase that brand product whilst I'm within my own world and my own social space. Very compelling. What are some of the cons? Functionality is limited on social platforms for AR, absolutely, but it's improving day by day. And there is limitations in terms of the quality of the experience and um, the function, as I said, the functionality of that. But here's the thing what's super interesting is when you begin to understand all of the possibilities and when you think about creating AR experiences, there are so many use cases. And these are just some examples of real world use cases for AR. It's being used everywhere. And, and all of these examples range from an app to a web-based experience to a social experience. And there's no right or wrong. There's no, this is the gold standard or the silver standard or the bronze standard. There are best in the class experiences, all of the different types of AR experience, uh, platforms that you can use. Um, and these are just a sprinkle. What excites me more is the way AR is being used across all categories. It's been used in gaming. You know, the, that Coca-Cola Cube Hopper example is an AR experience we helped create for Coca-Cola. Um, they wanted to make, they want to have this strategy that every Coke bottle allows you to unlock an augmented reality game. Absolutely love that. And then you've also got AR being used in retail. You just saw how Gucci and Snapchat are using that to enable you to buy a pair of Gucci's on, on their platform. But you've also got, um, you also have AR in, you know, food and beverage, in tourism, in marketing, in training, in education. It literally crosses all categories. So you can see why it's, why it's so appealing 
and why it has the potential to connect with audiences. So that's a bit of a flavor of, you know, just some basic fundamentals about what AR is, how it loosely works, the type, different types of AR experiences, the pros and cons of using those. But what about best in class AR? That's where we kind of, I really wanted to take some time to share with you some of the best in class AR um, augmented reality experiences out there. And what I've done is pick actually a selection of five of some of the best. And I'm going to share why I think they're the best, to give you an example of how they're being used across that multitude of categories, but also um, showing you the, the difference between app-based and then social-based so that you can really get a sense of, I can truly understand when I might want to create an app-based AR experience or when I may want to lean into a social-based AR experience. So let's dive into a little bit about what makes them what makes these best in class? And, you know, one of the things that I find really exciting is, you know, this talk is about how do you harness the power of augmented reality? We know that the pandemic triggered this appetite um, for brands and for people to use AR as a way to connect. So it's a great problem solver, especially when people are not getting out and about. It's a great way to be able to connect and create experiences. Um, but also we know that the technology is improving and, and changing day by day. The ability to access it across different um, devices and across different platforms and across different mediums is super exciting. But one of the most fundamental things for me is AR really allows brands to offer these very unique and immersive experiences beyond a banner ad, beyond a social post, beyond a tweet. And these experiences, when done well, have really have the ability to engage con consumers in a really memorable way. And what's super exciting is that as a brand, if people are not going into the high street and if culture is changing, the way people are shopping is changing, and if they are actually shopping and buying within their social platforms, that's really important for brands to be aware of that. And for us as creatives to understand the opportunity there, because the e-commerce side of it really, really is where the potential of showing how AR can have a return on investment is really powerful um, lever for brands. Shopify recently said, that last September that their product pages, ones with AR experiences led to a 94% higher conversion rate compared to traditional pages. So what does that mean? That means that experiences, pages, even e-commerce, using AR to engage consumers and elevate the experiences are actually converting much higher than your standard picture or standard even 360 gallery view. That's where it becomes super exciting about how you can use it, where you can use it, and actually the results that we're seeing because of it. And so, you know, I want you guys to get inspired. Um, and there are brands that are and brands and agencies that are working together to create some what I what I say are some of the best in class AR experiences out there. And they're embracing this technology. There's no kind of right way or wrong way to do it. You really got to try some of these experiences, put it out into the market and truly see if your audience engage with it. And I wanted to share with you five, as I said, really masterful ways some brands have been doing that and the different types of experiences that are being created off the back of that. The first is Wonderscope. And Wonderscope is, it was created by a VR studio called Within. And ultimately their goal is really trying to make AR more, uni, more of a universal and useful tool. They're using AR to teach literacy and to tackle bullying. So Wonderscope is an app. You can download the app and it's, a, it's aimed at children. And it's a way of getting kids six to eight to really enjoy reading out loud. So the way it works is the company have created these stories and as a, a child, as you're reading out loud, the stories are augmenting in your real world. Um, and they've created a series of stories that again, not only can be read, you know, come to life as you read them out loud, but one of their most recent stories talks about tackling 
bullying. So really educational, purposeful, and super playful. As you can see from the visuals and the animations, it's a really different way of transforming a traditional book and allowing the child to engage. They have three kind of other stories in Wonderscope, you know, Goldilocks, the three bears, Alice in Wonderland, some of those kind of traditional stories. But as I said, they're really kind of breaking their mold with their more recent one, which is called Cleo's Cosmic Quest, which is the one that you're looking at now. And it's an original story. And what's really nice within this is the within team have really been using augmented reality as a way to obviously connect, immerse their audience into their story. But there's moments of real kind of storytelling and character play. And there's moments where the entire room is being tracked and the story and the room itself becomes part of the story. So really, really immersive way of using AR to connect. And what I, one of the things I love is the voice interaction here, being able to read out loud. And as you read out loud, holding your device and the story and the animation come to life uh, through that. There's a really lovely twist in here with one of the stories, the Red Riding Hood story, for example, actually has a little stem twist. Um, and it, within the story, the user helps Red actually build a gardening drone. So again, it's education through play, through learning, and using augmented reality to bring that to life. So Wonderscope, really great example built by the team at Within. Our second example, now some of you may have seen this, it's launched, you know, I feel like it launched only last month, really great example by Verizon. And Verizon wanted to showcase their 5G capabilities and they did that with this super cool AR treasure hunt. And I don't know if any of you are Verizon customers and, and had the chance to try this because there were some hidden codes out in the real world. So this is a great example of kind of a metaverse play on augmented reality and user engagement. So Verizon kind of launched this augmented reality treasure hunt and they did it across five major US cities. They did this in partnership with a pop art collective, Friends With You. So all these little characters are part of that. And they also did it with a Grammy nominated artist, Halsey. And Hidden basically sees fans hunting out these QR codes and they are in New York, LA, Chicago and Miami. And as you saw from the video, you can use your phone to basically snap the QR code and it will take you into an immersive experience. And there you'll explore larger than life art, you listen to music from Halsey's new track, um, and you have the ability to kind of share on Twitter for your own chance to win an iPhone. And this was done in partnership with the agency RGA, and this was actually using web AR. So you didn't need to download an app. There was no barrier for entry, and it was developed on the eight, eight wall platform. So really kind of allowing people to immerse themselves. And again, just a really great example of having a treasure hunt style experience, which is not new, but using augmented reality to be able to do that in a very unique and, and new way. And the benefits for Verizon, well, because it was on Web AR, Verizon wanted to show off how cool its 5G was. So the Web AR experience only works really well when you know your connection is great. So again, a really great combination, a very on-brand use of AR and a great way to engage people. So the third example, and this one is uh, an example of something that I worked on at, at my previous agency, which was AKQA. And, you know, Nike have really been a brand that is always at the forefront of using technology in a very innovative way. And they've actually had an AR strategy for a number of years. It's definitely not something that they just decided to do, to do because of the pandemic. It was something they were doing because of their innovation play. Um, and they were very poised and, and ready during that phase to really use AR to engage with their audience. So as I said, Nike have always kind of em embraced AR technology. And one of the things that happened during the pandemic was that, you know, normally on Air Max Day, they always have an Air Max Day event. And that happens in real life and individuals, you know, come to kind of a store and they engage in experience. 
but because of the coronavirus, many consumers were avoiding stores. So AR technology became a great way to connect with them on Air Max Day. So this AR activation is super cool. It's uh, called Create with Air Max. They sent out these coloring books to a, you know, a, a small group of, of their audience. And they were, you were able to not only color in your sneaker, but then grab your phone, use AR to bring your color creation to life. You're able to play around with that, engage with that, and that takes you then through to an e-commerce experience. Nike printed only a thousand of these copies of these, these magazines to reach a very focused group of that sneakerhead community. But it was a great way to, as I said, leverage AR at a time to reach your audience when your audience were unable to come to you. You could scan a blank shoe, use your smartphone, create your AR model, and then also what it, they encourage people to do is once they finish the animation, you could share it on social. Super great way to see that technology. And this was again done with an app-based experience. So downloading an app and the ability to use the technology to allow you to color in real time and then see that on a 3D Nike shoe literally blew people away. So a great example there, use the medium to be able to solve for a real world problem and still connect with your audience. So number four, now 19 crimes, you've seen, you've probably seen a few examples of this um, AR experience in my deck. It's one of my favorite examples. 19 crimes is actually a wine label and they've been using AR for a, a while now to boost sales um, and in wine. And you wouldn't imagine it would be a category, as I said, the food and beverage category is a category that's really utilizing AR in such a smart way. And you wouldn't expect a wine kind of label to see the power of it and use that as a storytelling device to build its brand. It is the brand that is known as the wine bottles um, with AR. And what's really interesting about uh, 19 Crimes is it offers this wide range of wines and each of the labels um, features 19 crimes punishable, you know, by um, uh, the stories are all of the kind of, you know, the, the different stories that come to life for each of the crimes. Um, and it was all based on, you know, uh, Australia and the storytelling behind each of these characters comes to life. So not only are you buying the wine, but you're also buying the story behind each character. And as you can see there, whether it's the banisher, whether it's the unsurprised, you can use your phone to basically scan the bottle and that character comes to life telling you their story, how they were convicted, how they were you know, transported, how they were put in prison. Um, and it's very compelling storytelling. Um, it instantly made the brand recognizable. It also made it a reason why somebody would want to go out and buy the bottle. And it was a great way to stand out on supermarket shelves. And it worked perfectly because, you know, this was one of the, you know, I didn't know of this brand is one of the reasons why I brought the brand and the storytelling that they have um, is impeccable. This is, again, this is done with web-based AR technology, they also have an app. So they actually utilizing AR across all of the possible uh, platforms. More recently, what was really interesting is they, they continue to evolve these stories and individual stories about real convicts, real stories. They recently, as I said, did a partnership with the dog father, um, Snoop Dogg. They had a partnership with Snoop Dogg where he collaborated and he finally dropped this year in March, his version of Cali wine. Now, what was really amazing is obviously Snoop's famous West Coast rapper. He's also, you know, Martha Stewart's bestie, but it, he was swapping out his gin uh, and juice for, you know, grape, grape juice these days. And what was great is the collaboration with 19 Crimes is they utilize Snoop himself. So this Snoop Dogg collaboration actually went beyond the bottle. And it was the first time they actually used volumetric capture. So they filmed Snoop and through AR, he appears um, on, you know, in, in real life, on your table, near the wine bottle. And actually what they integrated with this 
is the ability to ask Snoop Dogg a question. So you could ask the dog father. And I would really encourage you to, you know, uh, uh, find this experience. The URL is there. You can you download it. You don't even need to download it. It's a web. It's a web experience. So you just put into the put the URL in, and you can experience that straight away. And what was great is that ability to use again. Um, not only have Snoop Dogg come out of the label, but take it to another level where you could ask him any question. And what was really interesting is Tactic is actually one of the studios we're working with at the moment on another AR experience. And we were, questioned, we were talking to them about this experience and they said, you know, because of the pandemic, Snoop didn't want to come to a traditional studio to get captured. So we actually went to Snoop and filmed Snoop against a green screen. So a lot of the times we think that this is, you know, it's complex technology, it's going to cost a lot, and it's really difficult to do, but actually the barrier for entry and creating something really cool like this is super low. Obviously, it helps when you have somebody as cool as the Snoop Dogg. It's nothing but a G thing, baby. I just had to play that one, obviously. So that's just a little example of what happens when you down when you you know um, experience the web AR app and Snoop can, comes out and again in this example he's there you can ask him questions and he's responding to your questions so they had a series of kind of banked responses from Snoop in there so super super cool and you know I've seen a huge huge trend for volumetric capture capturing real talent in 360 degrees and then being able to utilize that in AR. Now there was a time when the quality of that would not look so great, but as you can see from the Snoop experience, as the technology and the platforms improve, so does the quality of the experience and that in itself makes it something great for users to engage with. So last but not least, the final example I want to share, and this is super cool and definitely one of the, one, one of the kind of trends to watch is um, Snapchat is really leading the space when it comes to augmented reality try-on. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, one of the first things brands look, look to do during the pandemic is say, hey, people cannot come to our stores. How do we get our products to them? You saw a whole range of brands using AR as a way to try on their products. What's pretty phenomenal is Snapchat have, you know, and our Snapchat are not only the leaders in this space, but they recently launched a number of Snap experiences, which allowed you to try on products with the level of realism is, is simply absolutely blows me away. So the Snap try on is a game changer. With Snap, they recently worked with Prada. They worked with, um, uh, I think it's Zenny, the sunglasses um, brand. And then they also worked with Farfetch and the Farfetch experience is phenomenal. So they gave Snapchat users the ability to try on clothing and, you know, it works tremendously well. You're able to try on clothing that is absolutely adapting in real time to your body shape and your body size. You're able to try on glasses. Um, and as you can see from that example there, the glasses are working in real time to the shape and size of your face. So you have an adult there trying on glasses versus a young child trying on glasses. The reflections, the shadows, everything is very much very realistic to what you would, what it would feel like in, in real life. And then also with Prada, they recently did an experience again on the, with Snapchat where you could try on purses and bracelets in real time, virtually. The technology has really upgraded so much to a level where it's detecting not only, you know, responding, not only light and shadow and environment, but it's also detecting body movement. So as, you know, I'm trying on that far-fetched jacket or I'm trying on that bag and purse and I'm moving around, the 3D, you know, 3D models of the products are working incredibly well. And here's where it gets really exciting. They've also introduced a level of voice and gesture control. So I can literally just use my voice to be able to search other options and try another items. For example, in this far-fetched experience, which has enhanced virtual try-on, I could literally say, show me a windbreaker jacket with a pattern and it would change as instantly as that. Super cool. Um, and you know, the front facing cameras, 
the technology, the ability to track real-time body movements and a person's body shape and size as, is fundamentally a game changer. And you know, this is a really great example of how social AR has, in, within the past year and a half, absolutely leaps and bounds really, really giving app-based AR a considerable run for their money. And not to forget that by um, I can simply share the experience out, which is great from a brand point of view, or I can literally buy that windbreaker jacket directly within Snapchat. That again becomes super compelling. You know, previous AR experience, you kind of did an experience, but the e-commerce element was not tied to that. Now knowing how time poor and how consumers really just want to be able to simply with a tap, buy what they want and have it delivered within 24 hours. The ability to do that, it's not something of the distant future. It's really something of now. So definitely go and try out these Snap experiences if you have not already done so via the Snap platform. So that was the kind of final example. You know, for me, as I kind of bring this kind of to, to an end, you know, what I've taken you on is a very, very fast roller coaster ride of, you know, my journey into AR and VR, the power of AR, what AR is, some of the pros and cons, the different types of AR out there, and some of the best in class examples, whether it's, you know, education and app based um, experiences, we're using your voice and story to bring a story to life. You know, whether you are using this as a way to, um, you know, try on different products and services from, from a brand, or, you know, whether you are using this as a way to tell your brand story and engage with your community like Nike did with their Air Max sneaker day coloring book. As you embark on your, you know, AR projects, you know, really, really think about the possibilities and the remarkable ways that you can use AR to really revolutionize the way we interact with brands, the way we interact with each other, and then ultimately the way we're interacting with the world. I really fundamentally believe that AR is a total game changer. The possibilities are absolutely endless. We barely scratch the surface and it, we're only restricted by I imagination. So as you dabble in the dark arts of AR, really open your mind to what's possible. And I am super excited to, you know, see what some of you will potentially create in the future as you embark on your own AR journeys. And with that, I would love to thank you so much for joining the session. Um, as I said, I am sure you are all dialing in from different time zones in the world. It is it is coming up to nine o'clock here in New York. I've really enjoyed talking about this. And, you know, there is time for questions. If folks have some questions, I would love to take, take the time to answer some of those. I have left my Instagram, um, Instagram, Twitter, social handles on there. You are more than welcome to reach out to me um, and I will absolutely endeavor to get back to you on any questions that you have. But thank you so much for your time. And I hope this was helpful and enjoyable. Awesome. Thank you so much, Resh. Um, if anyone else is like me, I'm about to go directly to dabble in the dark arts because that was so <laughs> that was so cool. I thank you so much, seriously. Um, thanks everyone for joining in. Just a reminder: tomorrow we have some awesome panels. Um, earlier in the morning, we have uh, like a little yoga asana inspired practice. Um, we have other awesome panels from including a producer from Vans. Um, we have Lisa Mathis, uh, the partner at Fresh Laundry, and even uh, Caleb Davis, the producer of um, Tough Love. So join in tomorrow. Thank you so much, Resh, seriously. And of course, thank you everyone for joining. Totally. Hope you'll have a wonderful night. Take have care. an amazing night, everyone. Thanks for putting this on. That's great. Of course, of course. Thank you.